So generally you have a conflict when neither party is willing to humble themselves or compromise their desires or change their behavior. And I just wanted to bring up just an extreme example because uh, you know, it's one thing that really bugs me is, is domestic violence. Because domestic violence is just an extreme example of you know, a, a conflict in a relationship, right? But the reason why domestic violence really bugs me is because whenever it's in the media and whenever you hear about domestic violence, it's, it's always the woman that's like the victim. You know, it's like, oh, the, these, these women that are victims. And of course, you know, if they've, if they've been beaten up, of course they're a victim. But generally what the media doesn't go on about and doesn't talk about is the part that the woman had to play in that domestic violence. Right? Because there's always two sides to the story. And obviously a woman with a black eye, you look at her and you feel sorry for her. And of course we do. I'm not saying that it is a justified thing at all. But my point is that there's always two sides of the story. And I think domestic violence is one of those things where it always swings in one extreme and not the other. And when, and when you sort of even allude to say, well, what was the wife like? What was her relationship like with the husband? Did she nag him all the time? Did she bug him all the time? Did she do all this? Then you're like, oh, are you saying that it's the woman's fault? And this is, what I'm, this is the point I'm trying to make is that, that when there's conflict in a relationship, it's both their fault. And it's almost like the world doesn't let you have that position. Because if you say, oh, you know, the, the woman did something wrong, oh, you're saying it's the woman's fault. Or you say, oh, the man did something wrong, it's the man's fault. But you can't have the position that they both did wrong. You know, because maybe it was the man's fault, obviously, for, for, for beating his wife. But then you wonder, but did the wife provoke him? Was it like just years and years of, of, of a bad relationship? Years and years of nagging? Remember the continual dropping, the grievous words? And then to the point where he's just backed into a corner and then he starts striking blows. So, you know, you don't hear this side of the story in the media where, you know, what was their relationship like? Yeah, okay, he came home and he did something wrong, but what were the events leading up to that? What were about the years before leading up to it? These are the things you don't hear. And, you know, my position is both parties are wrong when it comes to domestic violence. I think it's very, very rare. I won't say always, but I'd say it's very rare where, you know, a lady is just doing everything right, but she's still getting beaten, you know? But um, one thing is, you know, when it comes to domestic violence, I just want to make this point a bit funny. It should always, it should always be about the man beating the woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, if, if it's domestic violence and the woman is beating up the man, I mean, come on, guys, you'd have, you just have to man up, all right? <laughs> Like, it, it's pretty embarrassing if it's domestic violence the other way. And it, it's almost like this equal rights movement is trying to swing it the other way. You know, there's these, so, did you guys see on YouTube these social experiments where, you know, a, a guy is like telling his girlfriend off and pushing her against a wall and everyone would jump in and try to help the girl and go, hey man, what's your problem? Like, leave her alone. And then they'll do it the other way around where, you know, they're walking down the street and then the woman's like slapping him and everything like that and everyone's just laughing at him. Well, that's because when, when that happens, he's not a man. And, and it's just ingrained in us that if a woman is beating up her husband, everyone's just thinking, well, you've got to man up and stand up to your woman. Like her slaps probably don't even hurt. You know, so I just think it's funny that they're trying to make this point and say, oh, men get domestically abused as well. And it's like, well, if you were a real man, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get domestically abused. You'd just be able to fend off your wife. So, you know, if it's, if it's, you know, if a man is being domestic, he needs to man. But I thought, you know, okay, I'm sure there are exceptions because maybe, maybe you're married to like some woman MMA fighter or something like that. And if that's the case, then, you know, maybe you have an excuse to be domestically abused. She can choke hold you. Um, so I think it's just a biological fact, right, that men are stronger than women and they're more likely to use physical force rather than words when, when there's strife. So it should always be about men being um, men abusing the women when it comes to domestic violence. Um, <clears throat> but you know, the point I want to just make here is, because domestic violence is an extreme example, and it's always swung to, oh, the woman's always the victim, She's, she never plays any part in domestic violence. But I, I honestly believe, and you know, I don't know that many domestic violence cases, so maybe if you guys do, you can correct me later on. I just personally believe that in 90, probably 99% of domestic violence cases, they could have been avoidable. Just using that principle that I was talking to you about, that if you, you have the power to keep the peace, and even a woman, I think, that is being abused by her husband, I just find it hard to believe that even if the husband is under, under the influence of drugs, 
under the influence of alcohol. If a wife was quiet, submissive, obedient, you know, and, and caring for her husband, did what's right. I mean, you think a husband, you think a husband is just going to beat up a, a wife that's just loving him and just, you know, submissive and obedient. I mean, that, that just doesn't make sense to me. Maybe, maybe you guys know of an example, so let me know. But, but in my mind, it just does not make sense. Something needs to have been built up. Something must have been said, in my opinion, for that to have happened. So don't misunderstand me. You know, I am not saying at all that it's the woman's fault. Oh, I, actually, I am. I'm not saying it's only the woman's fault. Because remember, I believe that when there's conflict, it's both of their fault. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying if a, if a woman gets domestically abused, that it's all her fault. Because obviously the man is wrong. And that is the greatest sin. Because he's meant to be the protector of his family. So he should be the more sober-minded one, the protector, and shouldn't be obviously abusing his wife. But it's always the result of two people, I believe. And you know, I've read, I, I, you know, you read articles online and you read blog posts about divorced women who are even in abusive relationships. And, and I just think it's ironic because they're in this abusive relationship and then they start a blog and then they start blogging about how terrible their husband was. And you know, I just needed to correct him on this and correct him on that. And you just think, is maybe that the reason why? Your relationship went sour because you felt like you always needed to give your opinion and you always needed to say the. And now that you're not married, now you're telling the world about it. You know, what, what, of course you're going to have some conflict there. So there's nothing wrong with speaking your mind or giving your opinion as a lady, of course. But you know, can you can you expect to have a successful and peaceful marriage if you're a contentious and continual dropping to your husband? You know, and if there's one thing we know about broken marriages, and this is why even when there's any conflict in every, any marriage and one person is made out to be the victim of the other, you know, if there's one thing you know about people that are in broken marriages, and we all know somebody that's in a broken marriage, right? And when they tell you the story, what do you, what do you, what do you know? The, the story that they're telling you, they're always the victim, right? Because like I said, it's just natural for sinners to blame other people. You know, it's like Adam, you know, he blamed his wife and then Eve blamed the serpent. It's natural for us to blame other people when we have conflict. And that's why when you hear a story you know, of a conflict in a marriage, whether it's domestic violence or anything, you're always going to hear the person is a victim. You know, they're the victim. And that's why I just think it uh, comes across that way. <sighs> so a lady might ask, you know, why should I be submissive to this man? Well, it's because it's God's commandment. And your role as a wife. So, you know, when it comes to the issue of domestic violence, you know, even if he is sometimes a bit unreasonable, you know, if you obey God's commandments, you'll have peace in your family. And there's a reason why it's like that. Is he doing the right thing? No. So nobody's justifying what the man has done. What, what, domestic violence is evil, right? It's sinful. It doesn't justify it. But I, what, my point that I'm just trying to make is that the woman in the domestic violence situation has the power to avoid it, in my opinion. 